like to
How does Guillermo differ when it comes to his approach to music? Uh, I think Guillermo has a passion, a very strong passion for, for cinema and for music and for music in his films. There's no, there's no fear, there's no limits, he's open to any ideas. Uh, he loves that music bring, can bring emotion or emotions, should I say, because of this film has many, many uh, twisting turns of emotions. He is in the valleys of, uh, you know, dangers, melancholia, we come near death and joy and fantasy and uh, the love between a father and a son. There's so many emotions you go through, uh, like in Shape of Water, there were so many emotions. Uh, and both of these films were with a strong social and political content in Pinocchio is fascism because the movie is set in the 30s in Italy and all this together creates um, tension you know that the music can also convey so the, the great the great moments with, with Guillermo is when I I think that I've approached the, the right idea musically and I play it to him and if I see that he's crying, I think I'm going to have the right spot. <laughs> he's very sensitive to music, you know, some directors are. There are not many that have this really great emotion. Josh Clooney is one of those to work with. Can you? He's <laughs> got fans. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> now, now um, Guillermo wrote, co-wrote some of the songs. Can you tell us about that because how often is it you have a filmmaker that is co-writing the songs? Uh, never. <laughs> no, the, the, the great, yeah, the, the great thing is that we started from the script. The script arrived in, in my hands with uh, a draft of songs, which were meant to be the chapters of the, of the story. Um, chapters, or end of chapters, you know, like captions used to be in the, in the silent movies. And, and it allows the characters to give away who they are, where they come from, their uh, their sentiment, you know, and could it be judge a bit or whatever it is um, in the film, and it, it it it's a very important process, and of course a long process with stop motion, because the songs have to be written um, way 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 before everything. Uh, so we wrote the songs about three years ago, so they can go to 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 Portland to the animation studio. Share the machine and, and get all the animators start working on the, the puppets because you know it's stop motion little puppets. Um, and it, I think they shot for 1,000 days if you see what, what, it, what I mean. So it's a long, bloody long process. <laughs> and, and so um, we started with Guillermo, and, and uh, I brought in an old friend of mine, Robert Katz, who had written songs way back. Um, in my early years as a, as a composer, and together we we, yeah, we, 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 we finished the writing of this. So, given that this was stop motion, when did you start writing this? How were you writing this work? Were you writing it off of concept, like off of a concept print? No. When, when, or was it? When you were writing it? I'm going to answer. I, I, you know, I like to watch. So I, I like to see the film, even if it's not completely edited yet, but I like to see the images, to see how the actors move, I like to, I love watching, listening to the actors. I spent a lot of time as a young composer in theaters, writing stage music and spending time at the rehearsals, listening, watching what the actors were doing, and I think when I work on a film, it's, it's always very, very present in, in my work. And I need to watch the film. Of course, I can find a theme, an idea, but I, I prefer watching. I, I, I do the job because I, I, and it's not a job. I do this, what I do every day, in long hours, because I love cinema, and I like the fact that music and cinema can really blend and, and, and work together. So the score, to answer shortly, um, came when I saw the film as a first draft with still a lot of animatics, there were still all the puppets or visual effects laid in. Um, and the good thing is that we had 
this idea with Guillermo that the songs wouldn't be too long in the film, that we didn't you know, break the pace of the story, and that we could actually, because our chapters use these motifs as, as light motifs also in the score. So you hear excerpts of the songs here and there in the score. Um, um, but the score came later. And just to say one, one thing about the songs, I was very lucky to have the cast sing the songs. Only the, the cast is singing, there's no other singers coming from a, from a, from a way, from a, from a film. Um, Christoph Waltz, John McGregor, both great musicians, great singers. Um, um, David Bradley, the little Gregory Mann, who played what a rearing song for us tonight, who plays Pinocchio. So we, we were very, very fortunate to have a, a great bunch of uh, singers, which are actually also actors. Your approach to instrumentation. Tell us about that. Well, I always, I always, um, it always takes me a little time to figure out what, what the film can sound in my head and what would be right. Like in Fantastic Mr. Fox, I used only little instruments. In uh, Shape of Water, I used uh, 12 flutes. I, I just try to to play around with instrumentation because there's so many options, so many things you can use to start and, you know, from the beginning of the film, trying to find a, 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 a tone, a color, a sound that belongs only to that film. And for this one, I suggested to, to Guillermo, it sounded a bit weird, but he, he liked it, and he said, yes, well, I suggested to use only wood instruments for the, for the score, so we only used the wood, uh, wood instruments, you know, guitars, mandolins, piano, harp, woodwinds, etc., strings, no brass. What's next for you? What are you composing now? What's next for me? Oh. I've seen George Clooney <laughs> in my studio in a few hours. 